Hello everybody and welcome back to Connor here. Hope you're doing really, really well. Um, <laughs> so yeah, let's let's just kick off with it. I wanted to get this off, you know, off my chest tonight. Really, I wanted to get it on tonight. And believe it or not, I'm probably not as down in the dumps as you guys were expecting, maybe hoping. Um, if you're potentially from an opposition fan channel, um, but listen. I was just blown away by that performance today. I mean, it was the good, the bad and the ugly of Leeds United today. It really was. And um, listen, we're talking about gears in football. Get second gear, third gear, fourth gear. Uh, against Huddersfield, maybe against Luton. Um, Barnsley this season, I can think. Derby, Forest, we've maybe been in second gear. Millwall, second or first gear. I tell you what, today, Leeds United were absolutely fantastic. Um, for 65 minutes, it's the best football I've seen under Marcelo Bielsa. Um, it, it was almost too easy. It was almost too easy. And this is a side in Cardiff with what were they relegated last year? Don't keep up with Cardiff or the Premier League, really. Was it last year or the year before? Um, and, you know, you'd expect a team to be coming down and coming to Ellen Road and, and, and really maybe playing us off the park, really. But uh, it was the complete opposite. You know, I was expecting a tough game before the game started. You know, I messaged Gary and I just said to him, look, I've got a bad feeling about today. I mean, ultimately... It wasn't the best end to the day that I wanted, but um, it was. I mean, I, I was I was naffed off, guys, at three one. I turned to the guy next to me and I said, "One, I cannot believe that three one. They've they, 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 how have they got back into this? What a joke, you know." And then and me actually seeing that one, you know, us conceding the goal for the first time in in in, in a fair few games, that really annoyed me. Now, set ended up three three. That's quite ironic, isn't it? But. I was that naffed off with 3-1. You can be excused to understand what I was thinking and saying at the end of the game. But listen, I thought we were absolutely sublime for 65 minutes. We tore them apart. They could not deal with us. Um, you know, it was just pure counter-attack after counter-attack. They couldn't get the ball. Every time they got the ball, they kicked it out for a throw-in or they kicked it long up the field just for Berardi and Ben White to retrieve it. That, uh, Danny Ward up front for them. I, I think he had about three touches of the ball throughout the entire uh, the entire game. Opta did a stat. In for goal, did a stat of the heat map of the first half. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing to say Cardiff City came down from the Premier League uh, and they're just getting absolutely mauled by this Leeds United side. I thought Helder Costa was... This is why I said to you guys, you know, the doubters, stick with him. He will get better and better and better, and he has. The kid is unbelievable, and I will say right now, he's the best player in that Leeds United side. I'd even rate him above Pablo, and that is mad to say how consistent he is through the game, how he never loses the ball, how he continuously takes on his man with success. He had Bennett on toast today. Had him on toast. You saw at the end of the game when Bennett was kicking out, kicking out at him, sorry, at the end of the first half, kicking out at him. Somehow the referee didn't give him a yellow card. Referee was appalling today. Um, I mean, to be fair to Cardiff, even if they're sending off, I mean, it didn't look like a sending off. And I think he was a pretty bad feature today. But listen, there were positives. Um, Pablo wasn't amazing today. I thought his passing was pretty off. But the ball for that first goal was sublime. Absolutely sublime. You know, cut through the eye of a needle. Costa obviously in on goal. And, and, and lovely to see him get, you know, his second, it was his second league goal in the Legion United shirt, I think, you know, I know you guys are dead specific on these stats, so comment down below, I think it's his second goal, um, but I thought he was sublime, he was just playing with Bennett, he was playing with him, and, and, and he, the kid couldn't get close, um, I thought on the other side as well, Pelletier was just shocking, it's shocking, I mean, I just couldn't believe how slow they were at the back, and how open they are, and how willing they were to let this Leeds United side just run at them, you know, the, it was almost like they were showing us too much respect. You know, seven games we've beaten them on the bounce, and Harris, Harrison was just tearing Peltier apart on the other side as well. Bamford was getting so much joy against Flint. Um, you know, Flint went off injured. I don't know if he just looked. He, I mean, he just looked on his ass. Flint. He looked absolutely knackered. Um, I wish Harrison had just gone at Peltier a little bit more. To be honest, we know how bad um, Peltier is. You know, he had spells at Ellen. Uh, well, he had a spell at Ellen Road. I cannot believe he's played in the Premier League. Um, but it's the same issues, isn't it, guys? We had eight massive chances, according to InfoGoal, eight big chances. You know, when you're looking at XG, um, Cardiff really had sort of three shots on target and they scored three. You know, all individual errors by Leeds United, which has been very unusual, which is why I'm quite upbeat about it. Is it annoying? 100%. Massively annoying because we've displayed our best performance of the season. 
and we've come away with the draw, but it could have been worse. We could have come away with the loss, you know what I mean? Um, but we were absolutely sublime, you know. It actually took me back to Derby in the playoffs last year, but the thing is, against Derby last year in the playoffs, we were no good. We were average. And this game, we were absolutely superb. It was better than Borough for me. That's how good it was in that first 65 minutes. We could have genuinely been 6 nil up, 6 7 nil up. And these just weren't half chances, you know. I say, sometimes in games I turn around on the reviews and stuff like that and I say, yeah, we could have been 6-7 up, but the, the sort of half chances, these were big chances. Absolutely massive chances, Chances, you know. Costa should have had a penalty. I've got it written down here. Dallas had two big, big chances on the edge of the box. Harrison had two, one where he was clean through. Clicks chip, which was a remarkable save by uh, the goalkeeper. And Bamford, obviously, when he was going through... And he could have passed it to click on the other side and he, he bounced it off the defender's leg, which was really disappointing. But these are the sort of chances we had, do you know what I mean? Um, but we were absolutely exceptional, um, taking out the last 25 minutes, relentless attacking. Costa and Bamford were, uh, they were what a partnership that was today, do you know what I mean? Um, but I, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's hard to criticise massively. It was men versus boys, you know, that first 65 minutes. We just mauled them um, chance after chance after chance. Um, uh, if I'm br being brutally honest, when I'm looking at the game, I didn't understand his subs. Why are we bringing on Struick when we've got Berardi on the field? Why not then just bring Struick alongside Berardi to shore up the defence when it's 3-2, you know? Um, I didn't get that. Um, I'm going to quickly touch on the corners as well and, and the height and stuff like that. I've tweeted it out a couple of times. Leeds are going to be susceptible. Listen, we knew that at the start of the season. That's not gone away. It's not gone away. We, we don't have height in this team. We do not have height. So how do we cope with that? Well, we can't unless we bring in a, a big lad, you know, unless we start playing Struick week in, week out, which obviously we're not going to do. Liam Cooper, he's not the biggest lad. He's not the biggest lad. And we're always going to be susceptible, especially to a Cardiff team. Very similar to Millwall. Very similar to Millwall in how, the, how they play. Well, Millwall pre-Gary Rower, do you know what I mean? That Harris style of play, the lump balls. But every time, I'm just saying to the guy next to me, just watch them play. And all they do is, whoo, whoo, the Rory Delaps. That's all it was. It just reminded me of Stoke 2008. Do you know what I mean? They didn't have a game plan. Well, they did have a game plan. It was to just to completely ruffle leads physically. And you know, it was so anti-football. And I'm not bitter because fair play to Cardiff. They've done a job on us. They've come and they've got a point when they're 3-0 down. Fair play, Cardiff. You know, fair play against the team who's won seven on the bounce. Fair play. I just, I, I wasn't a fan of your football. I thought the football you played was pretty dire. And it'll be interesting to see if, you know, you get many Cardiff fans saying that on the video, you know, because they've got quality in that side. And it's unbelievable how they can come to Ellen Road and obviously they've got a point, brilliant, fair play to you, but just play that style of football, it was just so awful to watch, you know what I mean? When you're seeing Leeds free-flowing football, wonderful touches, you know, there was points where I, I was just like, we played it at one point out from the back and straight to Luke Aylin, it was it was six one-touch passes with the, with the Cardiff high press, it was wonderful to watch. Um, but anyway, back to my point, the crosses in were always going to be susceptible. And you could see that towards the end. You know, um, Mendes Lang started getting a little bit of joy um, on, the, on that side against Dallas. Started whipping a few balls in. And, and, and we look susceptible. But you've seen it with Derby. You've seen it with Forrest. You've seen it with Millwall. You've seen it with Blackburn to an extent against Leeds United. Hull the other night, you know, when Kiko made that world-class save and we went to the other end and scored. All teams, when they get, you know, when the balls are put into the box, they look dangerous against us. When you've got a six foot five guy, let's say a centre a centre forward who's six foot five against you know even just Ben White, Ben White's going to struggle to compete with him. He's doing exceptionally well, but you know when Berardi's scaling on top of defenders to get the um, you know to get the header, it's not natural. You know that's why West Brom have got a Jay and Bartley. That's why Forest have got Dawson and Worrell, all massive centre halves. And Leeds play a different way, so we don't have that. We can play lovely football out from the back. But the, the deterrent to that, the Achilles heel to that, is the fact that from set pieces, we're going to be susceptible. And that's what we've all just got to get used to. That's not just gone away. We've kept 12 clean sheets this season. But I would still dare to say when balls do come into the box, even when we've kept those clean sheets, Huddersfield, Carl and Grant right at the end when that ball was whipped in. Daly at the end for Huddersfield when that ball was whipped in. Tom Eaves twice the other night when the ball was whipped in. 
we are susceptible. Barnsley, look at Barnsley away. We came out of there with a clean sheet, but those balls whipped in. Unbelievable how we didn't concede. We're a fantastic footballing team, but we are susceptible on set pieces. That is just how we play, how Leeds play. We want the ball on the ground. We don't want it in the air. And that's the best sort of line to take away from Leeds United. We want it on the ground. We don't want it in the air. And, you know, for 65 minutes, that was on point today. You know, we were excellent. Um, I mean, how many, you know, how many, how many times will you score three goals at home and draw the game? It's incredible. But, um, yeah, I, I didn't get the, you know, let's go back to the first goal. Um, and this is this is my point with Kiko. It, it was doom heading when people were slagging Kiko off for that. You know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm coming around to Kiko a little bit more. But you can see he wants to help his centre-halves out. He came out to punch it because you had Morrison and Flint. Well, not Flint had just been taken off. It was the other lad. I think it was Nelson coming in from the back. And they were towering over Berardi. I think Click was marking Nelson at that one point. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to watch it back. But from memory, it was. So Kiko came out to try clear it, to try help his defenders out. Because Kiko's, what, 6-3, 6-4. But they were getting physically, it looked like they were going to score anyway. If Kiko hadn't have come out, he had to make that punch. It goes to, I can't remember who scored, but it was a pretty insane lob as well. It was a wonderful lob, guys. You know, it was right on it. It was sort of like an acute angle, lobs it in. And yeah, you know, everyone's going to turn around and say, it's Kiko. But I think it's massively harsh. I really do. Kiko's going to have to do that because we're dwarfs at the back. He's going to have to help us. Do you know what I mean? He's going to have to act as though he's going to act as he's going to have to act as sort of a, a, another centre half, if you will, in a weird sort of way. Um, but yeah, the second goal as well, Berardi's fault for me. Gives away the ball. He was sloppy today for me. You know, a lot of you'll turn around and say he was wonderful, but for me, he wasn't. He was. You know, there was bits in the first half where the whole team was great in the first half, but second half he was giving sloppy passes away as was Pablo, do you know what I mean sloppy balls away, Harrison wasn't amazing today but Berardi obviously because we build from the back, we got caught out obviously they got, you know, they come forward for the second, get the goal, do you know what I mean and that whip ball in, that whip ball in from Bennett completely caught us out and Michael, uh, sorry, was it, is it Michael Morrison, I'm not sure, it might be the, Sean Morrison, nods it in and, and you know that was all from a stupid Berardi pass which you know, a bit sloppy at times and I thought we looked way too complacent I thought second half we came out five yards slower. I really did. You know, even though um, we could have got a fourth, we could have got a fifth. That first half were mind blowing. We were absolutely mind blowing, and we should have got four, five, six. Um, but listen, the other one is you know Bamford for uh, Enketia again. Is that working? You know, I think we look more. I think we look more complete as a team with Bamford on. You know, and and you wouldn't have believed me saying that, would you? Um, I do think there's been a little bit of a dip from Eddie. You know, when he's come on. And maybe we're not feeding it to him that often. Maybe we're not. Maybe we're not doing the right things for Eddie. But you know, he did get a man sent off, so they're clearly still terrified of his pace. Um, but obviously, recently he's not been doing massive things with his twenty-minute spells. But I still want to keep Eddie. I love Eddie, but I think it's become a little bit paramount now that he's definitely going to be that impact sub. You know, two or three months ago, I was calling for him to start, but I think Bamford looks so good at this moment in time. We can't really form an opinion on who's going to start Bamford already. I think it's got to be Bamford. But we've got to keep Eddie for me. I still think he's, he brings something to this lead side. But listen, we're going to have wobbles. Of course we're going to have wobbles. Not every team can go on 8, 9, 10 game runs. And this is Cardiff. Cardiff, we've just come down from the Premier League and we mauled them. We absolutely mauled them for 65 minutes. And I keep saying that, but it's true. It was the best football I've seen under Bielsa. Um... And we've really got to keep that in our heads. We've not, we've not had, you know, with all respect, we've not had Barnsley and Luton come into town here. We've had a team who've been gathering momentum, three wins on the bounce here. On, you know, it's changed some real form in Harris. And we've absolutely battered them. And we've had three lapses of concentration and they've got back in the game. So you've got to take it, you know, with a pinch of salt, really, for my, in my personal opinion. We're not going to win every single game this season. We've had seven on the bounce. Um... And I think it was, hopefully it'll be a lesson for them today because no team should go 3-0 up in the 65th minute and lose three goals in that 25 minutes. And that'll, that'll, that'll naff Bielsa off and it's naff me off big time. Big time, especially when they're out of 10 men. You know, it had, it had remnants of Wigan again, didn't it? And that's poor, that's unacceptable and hopefully that'll be drilled into the lads because that is unacceptable. We were the better team today. And that was a mentality thing. You've got to keep that going for 90 minutes. And that's what I've always said with this Leeds team. I do worry about the mentality. But this isn't the end of the world. 
it's a different lead scene this season. And you know, when clubs are coming on and, and doing the bottle emoji, I mean, imagine that. Imagine coming on our page and doing the bottle emoji. Do you know what I mean? And what is it? Is it been? Is it? Are we fourteen unbeaten or something like thirteen, fourteen unbeaten? Three draws and the rest wins. And we're bottling it. Jesus Christ. Um, but listen. Um, as I said, like last season, you know, we'd, we we lost the Hull at home. Um, Huddersfield away, we'd have lost last season for me. Luton away, we'd have lost for me. Barnsley away, genuinely last season, I feel we'd have lost. So we're a different team. Um, but the annoying thing today for me was that we were absolutely insane, and that's why we should have won the game because we were brilliant. Um, but listen, the fixtures coming up, Fulham. You look at Fulham's run of form at the mo- this moment in time. If Brentford can beat them. If the teams around them, which are currently beating them, can beat them, we should be able to beat them. Do you know what I mean? Or at least get a draw. But we shouldn't be losing down there. And that's the mentality now. It's the mentality that the fans should be on as well. And I'm susceptible to that because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm normally glass half empty instead of glass half full. But um, we should be winning that game. Preston at home. You look at the performance today against Cardiff, who, who over the season will probably be better positioned than Preston. Do you know what I mean? Which sounds mad because Preston are third, but there's not much of a gap between, let's say, Cardiff and Preston. Anyone in that sort of three to eight gap, there's not much of, of a gap. You know what I mean? Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that pans out, but I think we should be winning both those games. Birmingham away, it's a tough game, but we should be winning it. And then the decide is going to be West Brom. That's going to be the big one. That's going to be one way you turn around and go. But these, you know, the next three games we should be winning, for me. Um, but the mentality needs to be strong. Bounce back ability is huge in this division, and we need to stand up, be counted, because there need to be men in that in that changing room. I didn't see a lot of leaders today when it went three one three two. Leadership's huge, and there needs to be dressing down in that changing room about losing that result uh, in the manner we did uh, wasn't good enough but it's a reality check we can never be complacent and I think as a fan base when that that, that first one went in for Cardiff I think we're all getting a little bit nervous because we've seen the pattern before that's where mentality comes in that's where leadership comes in that's where everyone needs to stand up and be counted and be men on that football pitch and stand up for what's what's right what's right on the shirt the Leeds United badge Um, but listen 3-0 we absolutely battered them. Uh, three, three, fair play to Cardiff. It's one of those anomaly results which you'll never ever see again. Fair play to Cardiff. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, you know, Harris came out afterwards and, and, and he's actually said, I'm paraphrasing here, but we got absolutely battered for 70 minutes and we've come out with a draw. Do you know what I mean? And he's come out of fair play to him for saying that. So, yeah, we go again, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll see you in a bit.